Well, first of all, welcome to the first workshop on WUDAP. WUDAP is named that we've given to a project which is designed to bring together data sets, information from around the world, fundamentally to tell us about the cities, the places that people occupy. What we're mostly interested in gathering is information on what we refer to as the urban form and the urban functions that occur inside cities. And we need this information for a variety of reasons. Why is it needed? Less than 3% of the land area of the planet is covered by urban areas, or cities as we should call them. They consist of hard and permeable surfaces, and they also consist of buildings which are proximate to each other. The consequence of this is that they dramatically change the near surface climate. They redirect water away from the soil and into runoff. They redirect energy away from evaporation and into heating of the overlying atmosphere. So one of the best known examples of this, of course, is the urban heat island. But there are also places where activities are concentrated, it's where traffic is focused, where commercial activity is focused, and where industrial production is focused. And that means that they are a source of a major amount of anthropogenic activities, and as a consequence of waste generated into the atmosphere. And these have obviously have effects on air quality, on water quality, at all scales. So, for example, it's estimated that more than 50% of the direct emissions of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere originate from just that 3% of the land area of the planet. Now, our objective in this particular class, this workshop, is to try and find out information for cities around the world, collect in a clear, consistent manner that we can actually do comparisons between cities. More than half the planet live in cities now, and even as the population of the planet is projected to fall, the population of live in cities is set to continue to rise. That means that for most people on the planet, the urban environment is the environment which they are most familiar with, which they occupy most often. We know very, very little about cities, however, next to nothing. And once we get outside the economically prosperous part of the world, there's very, very little information on cities. What distinguishes this project from other projects? Well, other projects try to tell us about the extent of cities, to tell us about areas that are urbanised or not urbanised, but they tell us nothing about the details of the city itself. It tells us nothing about the roughness of the city formed by the buildings. It tells us nothing about the impermeable surfaces. What information there is out there is often collected in an idiosyncratic and inconsistent way, which makes it very difficult to compare information from one part of the world to another. And that's the key to WUDAP, is to try and gather information on cities around the world in a consistent manner, so we can do the comparisons. Who needs it? Well, the people who need it are the people who are trying to project what the climate of the future is going to be like, and what the consequences of climate change at the planetary scale will be for cities themselves. So we have a convergence of things happening right now. Enormous number of people occupying cities. Finally, a science that's capable of addressing things that occur at a city scale. And our objective here is now to acquire and gather information in a consistent manner to have conversations about cities. What else makes you would act different, I would argue, is that we're using conventional science and scientific information in the form of, say, satellites. But differently from many other projects, what we're trying to do is collate the information, the innate knowledge that residents of cities around the world have about their own cities. So this makes, I think, WUDAP a different project. It's community-based. There's lots of information out there that's freely available now that will tell us about cities, but what we are missing are the individuals who live in these places to try and tell us more details about those places. And that's what WUDAP is an attempt to do, to bring together those two communities and have shared conversations. Now, I organised this conference in collaboration with a number of other people, including a colleague, Jason Ching, and a colleague, Linda C. I'm going to ask Linda to have a brief word about the community aspect of this scientific project, which is the gathering information on cities globally using local expertise. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, as Gerald mentioned, I'm, I'm Linda C. So I work at the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. This is an institute just outside of Vienna. And the focus of the institute is global problems. So urbanization is therefore one of the, the core interests of IASA. Now I also work in a program called Ecosystem Services Management and a group within that program called Earth Observation Systems. And what we work on there is crowdsourcing and uh, GeoWiki. So you'll be introduced to GeoWiki during the course of the workshop, how we can use it. Uh, we want to discuss uh, 
new, new um, advances in GeoWiki, how it can help us do the data collection. So the data collection is the key, the crowdsourcing is the key. So we, we use terms like crowdsourcing, citizen science, volunteer geographic information. We use them as synonyms. Now there are some nuanced differences between these terms, but basically this is about involving the crowd. The crowd can be citizens, the crowd can be experts in collecting information, in analyzing that information, or we can engage with that community at an even higher level and they can help us with research. So they can even, for example, come up with hypotheses. They can help us with the experimental research design. Okay, so um, the involvement of the community is, is a core part of the WUDAP project. Now, why is citizen science and, and this community-based approach suddenly come to the fore? In fact, citizen science has been around for a very long time, I mean centuries. So if you look at someone like uh, Alfred Russell Wallace, if you've heard of him, he, he was um, just a citizen particularly interested in understanding processes. So based on empirical observation, he was actually observing evolution, the processes of evolution. Uh, but he actually had to finance that work by uh, collecting exotic birds and then selling that. But his real passion as a citizen was trying to understand what was happening on the ground versus someone like Charles Darwin, who was really in academia and, and at the same time coming up with these theories. Okay, so citizen science has been there for a long time. But why has it suddenly become a big buzzword, citizen science crowdsourcing? Why are those terms suddenly come to the fore? And there's, I think, three reasons. The first is this. I think everybody probably has one of these. I mean, I've resisted having one of these for a long time, but now I have one. I think if you don't have one, you're certainly going to have one soon. But the key is not necessarily that you'll have one. It's the fact that mobile penetration in places like Africa, South America, Asia is exponentially increasing. And with this, we can literally map the world. So I can take a picture. It's geo-referenced. I can tell a story about that picture. It's my interpretation of the landscape. I can map it. I could tweet about an event. I can see a flood happening. I, I can feel an earthquake. And suddenly I, I become part of a community-based alert system. Or disaster management is a great example where citizen science is being used. People going out post-disaster, mapping things. Uh, you know, and that's really helping communities understand and respond to these events. And I think OpenStreetMap is probably one of the most successful examples of crowdsourcing or, or volunteer geographic information. Crowdsourcing tends to be more sort of the business side. Citizen science tends to be more the sort of scientific research side. But OpenStreetMap was started simply because people were tired of having to pay so much money for basic data. And, and this is data being collected by national mapping agencies which are publicly funded. So uh, Steve Coast, in fact, started this initiative in, in, in London and sort of said, okay, let's just map the world ourselves. Now OpenStreetMap is a very big, thriving and sustaining community, collecting the sorts of information that we can use as part of this initiative. So I think some of the discussions will, will be about how can we use all these disparate pieces of information that are out there uh, to, to, to help Woodup. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I should say thank you to a number of groups. One group is IASA, Linda's group, and the European Union has supplied a lot of the funding via cost, via IASA. The other group is Argyle National Laboratory. And, uh, uh, for the, uh, the support for many people to attend this conference and to stay at the conference. And I also have to thank UCD, obviously, and my own school, Geography, Planning, and Environment and Policy. And I, some of the funds that were derived from uh, ICUC-8 um, via the International Association for Urban Climate have also been used to support the conference. At this point, WUDAP is an idea, and that's all it is. What we're going to be exploring over the next three days is whether we can convert some of these ideas into a reality. So I hope at the end of this particular project everybody's enthused about the project and what the possibilities are. It's a possibility that involves people who actually live in cities telling us about the places they live, combined with people with expertise in particular techniques, utilizing modern technology, and combining them to them to tell us about where more than half the planet spend most of their lives. So thank you.